Hey guys, I'm back again, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, kick processing. This time, a little bit more in detail. But before we go in, uh, I recommend you to check all my channels you see here to get all the recent updates on my stuff. In the first video, I've showed you how to use this technique in general, but what I did not show you is that I usually repeat this procedure again and again and resample the processed material until it's right. We start with this track um, from my buddy Hodgson. And we're going to end with this one from my buddy Dr. Drew. Okay, uh, two tracks, pretty full, pretty much full with uh, lots of stuff. So I just extracted a little piece at the ending. And you can hear there's a lot of stuff going on with uh, uh, synthesizers and hi-hats, shakers, and stuff like that. But we can make it very clean, and at the end, um, ending up with a good, straight, clean kick. Okay, let's do it again. The first thing, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to duplicate the track. Um, we leave this one untouched, and then we have another one uh, with two plugins on it. This is the gainer, where we can uh, flip the phase on uh, 180 degrees. And um, then we have another one with a linear phase EQ, where we um, select the frequency we want to cancel out. Okay, these are the tools. Now we make an exact copy of um, the track, of the part. And it has to be on the same position, very important on the same position, Other one, uh, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, okay, now we just select the portion where we just want to get rid of. Usually I go, to the end of the sample and work my way towards the beginning. Analyzer will help definitely more to get the exact frequency range we want to erase. So you can see here it starts around 250 or something. Yeah, that's nice. Can go a bit more higher. I didn't cut out too much in the low end, um, uh, not low end, in the uh, lower mids. Um, so we still have some room, okay? A B comparison, that's good. Okay. Um, I think. Um, so I think we just have to lower the volume a bit. Okay, I think that's cool. So we can bounce this as the first result. And this is what I've done also in the um, first um, video. I've bounced this thing down um, just one time. But what I usually do, I uh, repeat this step over and over again until I get the kick very clean. Okay, then we take this already processed kick and um, we do the stuff again. So we're selecting the frequencies which are, which are left. And at the end, it's more the kind of a low mid whoop sound. See at the very end. So we're going to get rid of this guy without affecting the low ends here. You see here. So around 250 or so. We filter it again. Yeah. It's exactly that sound. But we still have some kind of a high frequency content we don't want to erase. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. We gently extend a bit the, um, the fade in. I think that's fine. Without. With. Okay, perfect. Uh, now we got rid of the end. 
Okay, let's bounce this thing down as half process two. Okay, um, that's good enough, but we still have some stuff going on in the bass drum uh, we don't want. And this is the um, tricky part now, because we have a height in the beginning and then a sample right after that, uh, um, synth synthesizers right after that. You see? Okay, so we do it again. And now we're going to erase this pad or stuff what, what is going on, not the height in the beginning. As you see, I leave the attack out so the kick doesn't get affected. Okay, we have to go a bit more higher to get all the synth stuff out. More gentle fade in would do. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Can go a bit more lower. Oh, well, let's see. Yeah. That will do. Okay, so we bounce this as a half processed. That's the reason why I call it HP half processed. This is my own naming convention, but of course you can come up with your own. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, we still have the Hyatt in the beginning left. So now we have to process it without affecting the attack from the kick, which is a bit... Uh, not really, which is not really possible, but um, we try to f find our way. So the height is a bit long in the beginning, as you can hear, it's not that short. And with the small fade in, we still have a bit of uh, the height going on, so it, it, it acts actually like an attack. Yeah, this this could work. Without, yeah. Okay. Yeah, now we can zoom in. We could could even make it more shorter so that we don't have that much height. Just a short attack. Yeah. I think that sounds good. Good enough for me. Um. That will do. Now I just got rid of the Hyatt. Okay, we can bounce this down to, um, I think we are, we are final with this cake. Yeah. So three steps, half processed one to three, and now we got the final result from the cake. And remember that this is only working with a linear phase EQ, nothing else. Let's hear it again in comparison to the original one. Perfect. And now I can use this kick um, on your song. You can map it to a sampler and do whatever you like with it. Okay, second kick. Same problem. Lots of stuff going on, um, but the kick has a longer decay at the end, and this is what we want to preserve. Okay, good. Then we make a copy to our main channel, and then we make another copy um, to the phase reverse channel. Okay, now let's get rid of the end, what I did in the beginning. Gentle fade in. Remember, always make it gentle. Yeah, I think we could could go more go more down. You see here, the low ends are starting below 125, so we can go almost in that range. Yeah. Okay. Can go a little more, more down. 
Yeah, that looks good. Let's go a bit more into detail and um, just to make sure that the higher doesn't disturb. And we got the decay preserved, which is fine. Okay, let's hear it. Adjust the frequency again. Get um, the kick more clean. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. So we got the low ends preserved and filtered out the end of the sample. Oh, we're not 100% there, so let me see what we can do. Now we're going to adjust the fade time again. So it's, the transition might be a bit more smooth. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Half processed. One. Okay, now we can, rid of, can get rid of these and um, put in the... Process kick. Okay, we still have some stuff going on here. The second half. So we're going to get rid of this stuff. You see, I'm slowly going towards the beginning of the kick. Okay, let's get rid of this stuff. Good. I think that's good. Yeah. Before. Now. Great. Yeah, I think that will do. Okay, let's take this. As half process two. You see, you can go really crazy with this and resample the thing uh, a thousand times until the kick is clean. Okay, I took the processed kick in to process the rest. Very important, we have to leave out the attack. The attack has to be in there. So I'm choosing here to leave out the beginning, of course. And as you can see on the analyzer, the upper frequency range without affecting the kick. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Okay. Fine tuning. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good to me. You might have a bit more space in the beginning. Let's try this out. Okay. Good. This is the half processed three. Okay, it's already sounding good, but we still have um, some height in the beginning. Okay, I could go on and filter the stuff out, like we usually did. Um, but in that case, I really want to present the attack from the kick, so um, i show you another technique I sometimes use, not all the time, sometimes. I simply um, go on a sample editor and I uh, paint it out. Okay, what the hell is talking about now? When you have a closer look at the waveform, in the waveform editor, you can see that there is some um, stuff going on right in the beginning. You can see that there's lots of more high-frequency content in there. It's not really sine wavy as it should be. 
So I simply use the pencil tool um, to paint these things out to make it look like a sine wave, a straight sine wave, which means that we really get rid of um, the high frequency content. Okay, and well, I do it with the two channels. Of course, when you have a mono kick, you do it with the mono channel or with a mono sample. So, as you can see, it's gone. We just draw it out. Perfect. Okay, let's hear this thing. Sounds good to me. Um, that's it. Um, happy sampling. And um, I would say see you next time around. And thank you for listening.